Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode in almost a year of the I Hate Matt Wall podcast with your host, Matt Wall. And now um, we're kind of changing things up a little bit here in the sense that this is not just going to be the I Hate Matt Wall podcast. This is going to be the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry and Music Podcast. Why am I adding words to the name of this? Well, there is a little thing called S-C-O. Not C, S-E-O. And it's good to be able to... um, optimize your shit so motherfuckers can find it and um there is uh, I, I i just want people who are searching poetry to be able to find it and maybe i'll just call it a poetry podcast i don't fucking know because i'm going to be talking about fucking writing i'm going to be talking about literature i'm going to be playing music i'm going to be talking about um, the films i'm making and shit like that it's just like a creative fucking podcast you know and because this is the i hate matt wall podcast can you guys see all the scratches on my glasses god i am hard on these fucking things Um, Oh, so for those of you who can't see it because I'm just in your ear holes, um, if you are um, a Patreon member or if you are a um, YouTube member, you will be able to see the actual video of these amazing podcasts. Because like right now I'm wearing this like string bikini and I got my tits out and everything like that. I'm not wearing pants. There's really insane things going on down below the waist here um, that have to do with peanut butter and tongues. But um, if you're just listening to this podcast, you would never know that. So if you want to actually see these things that may or may not be true, you have to either go over to Patreon, which I think the actual Patreon handle is patreon.com slash Wall. Or you could go to IHateMattWall.com and that will show you everywhere to go. And you could go to um, my YouTube page, which you can find very easily. Just search Matt Wall and you'll find it. Um, if you join the, the base crew, um, you get extra videos, 10% off of merchandise and all that other stuff. Um, but if you join the Anarchy crew... You not only get that, but you also get daily writing prompts. You get um, three Poetic Anarchy lessons a week, plus the live stream, members-only live stream. It's it's a lot of stuff, and you get 25% off of chapbooks, broadsides, and um, zines. Took me a minute. I just made an Americano, and I let it get cold. That is fucking disgusting. Ugh, I could have done that better. But that's what I'm putting in me, so that's what's going to happen. He mad. He mad. He mad. So, um, this episode is usually, almost always, going to be brought to you by me. So, um, let's get into that. So, this, I think, goes up Tuesday. So... This will be out by then. And what is this? Those people who were just listening say. Well, I will tell you. It is my new chapbook. It is my September chapbook. It is called Los Angeles. And it is about the unhoused in the area. It is about um, drug use in the area, crime in the area, um, prostitutes in the area, um, and also me driving around town and having adventures um, in the downtown. So um, it's a lot of fun, good stuff. I like it. And it's so funny. I'm like, oh, let's call this uh, oh, a poetry podcast. And I'm showing you all this poetry stuff, but I'm going to give you a little heads up. 
next month's chapbook is going to be scary stories. What the fuck am I doing? Anyway, um, also this month we have um, Bunny Wilds, The Potato Manifesto. Only have a few copies of these left. And Los Angeles um, is limited to 24 copies. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about chat books and shit, um, my four poetry on writing chat books, the type hard, type daily, type fast, and type drunk, um, those right now are $5 each on my Etsy shop. And the four pack of all of them is only $15. That's only going to be until the end of the month. And then they're going to go up to the normal price of um, $7 each. And then for all four, what am I going to do for all four? I guess uh, 21, maybe 20. We'll just call it 20. I don't know, something like that. Um, so just keep that in mind if that was something you were um, interested in uh, picking up because that's how that's going to go. Um, one thing that I do want to talk about, and this is kind of a lot of the stuff that we go over in the Poetic Anarchy course, which is kind of like a philosophy of creation. And all of the stuff I talk about usually stems from poetry, okay? Okay. But all of it can be used with any other thing you create, whether it is like I use these same principles for film, for music, for um, art, like painting, the paintings I do, um, short stories, serials, novels, um, you know, like I use poetry as the base for all of this. Because poetry is, no matter what people tell you, poetry is the most simple way to convey any kind of thought or emotion, hands down. And because of that, and because it is so short, being able to see results happens immediately. So I could tell you to do all this crazy shit and then go write a novel. And then in nine months, you can come back to me and tell me if you think any of the stuff we talked about worked. Or we can get you writing poetry using all of the, the toolbox shit and the examples. And you will be able to see within an hour how these things affect you. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying here? So that's the deal. But there is also, fuck, that is nasty. It tastes like there's soap in it. Is there soap in it? Okay. But the other thing here is, is that the poetry world is so fucked that on me just, like, I enjoy fighting against a system that is inherently wrong. Um, when I see, like, injustice in something that I know I can do something about, um, it, like, it lights that fire in me to go after it. On another bit, or whatever the fuck you want to call this, um, going after um, the poetry elite or the literati or academia that is all very satisfying one because it's wrong and it needs to be fixed but two because there are so many people out there who don't know there are so many people out there who are just blind sheep and believe everything that fucking um the, I don't know what we should call it, the poetic university tells you. So in um, coming episodes, we're going to be taking like each thing that I have a beef with and talking about it. And you will probably, 
if you are of the literati or of academia or whatever, you are by nature going to want to argue these points with me. And I would love to have like honest debates with you guys about this shit. But I understand that it's going to be hard for some of you to be able to not want to scream at me because you took out fucking student loans, you know, you're still paying that shit off. Okay. You like college and university, that's fucking expensive shit. And if you have to sit there and accept in yourself that all the shit that your poetry professors and shit like that taught you is complete and utter bullshit. That's a large fucking pill to swallow. Like, I wouldn't want to fucking hear that kind of shit. So, like, there's a part of me that completely understands why there might be anger at the things that I'm saying. Um, but, you know, let's try to keep it civil, you know? And um, we can talk more about this. I'm trying to figure out if I want to just go hard into um, my theory of the literati or if we want to talk about other shit. Let's go hard into the literati. I'm going to try to hit these topics the best I can. Now, the funny thing here is, is that I should have wrote notes. I should have been able to come here with a mouth full of shit and a head full of fucking cum and be able to fucking tell you guys what's what. But, um, oh no, Jungle Boy's out there and he's actually naked today. Is he picking his ass? What the fuck's happening? Oh my god. He found himself a little white shirt. Real quick, Jungle Boy is one of the, um, unhoused people in the neighborhood who like just hang out on the street and um normally he wears like this weird little like like I think they're shorts but there seems to always be an extra leg in them and um you know he like doesn't wear shoes he doesn't wear a shirt he's like totally ripped and tan as fuck <laughs> And he, like, goes in people's yards. Oh, he's... It's like a thong. It's... He's wearing a thong. Okay. I understand now. But he, like, goes into people's yards and, like, climbs up in their trees and, like, pulls all the leaves off the trees. And then he'll, like, go up to someone else's yard and decide that he needs to garden it. And he'll rip everything out of the yard until it's just dirt. And then he'll grab, like, a branch and sweep the dirt off the sidewalk. Um, he seems pretty harmless, but um, he, he just kind of cracks me up when he does shit like that. I don't know. I never thought he would be able to have less clothes on than he does right now. Um, or less clothes than he normally has on. And he proved me wrong. He's like, hold my beer, dude. I'm going to show you how naked I could get. Oh, good for him, dude. Okay, so, the literati. I am a firm believer that poetry is not how you say, but that it's what you say that's important. And for years and years and years, most people tell you that the how is the most important thing. And, um, you know, if you're lucky, you might be able to come up with a what the fuck does that mean in the poem. And then that's when you know you're fucking good. And I completely fucking disagree. There has been poetry since way, way before um, the Greeks and the Romans. When rules are made and all this other shit and things are supposed to be done a certain way and then as hundreds of years have evolved and um, people are like, oh, you know, like we'll add this rule and now we can call this a, a, 
poodle doodle boo you know oh and then we'll do it like this and call it a doodle doodle boop like you guys are just making things up like anybody can do any kind of anything call it a form if they could repeat it and then all of a sudden it's a thing i don't know if you guys are familiar with mad libs but mad libs is a thing where you don't know what the fucking story is and you're just picking you know adjectives and nouns and verbs and adverbs and uh, proper nouns and all this shit and somebody writes it down in this thing and then reads you a story and it's funny because like you didn't know what you were doing that's what fucking poetry is that is what traditional form based poetry is and um you know <clears throat> a lot of people who um, believe in traditional poetry and like yell about it and do all this other shit as long as it's like the rule of the schoolyard as long as there's other people who agree with their thoughts it's an accepted thought and some of you might be going yeah like no shit like that's how everything is but the thing here is is if somebody has a thought that is wrong okay and they say it snooty enough to where other people around them are like oh shit is that right well he said it so i guess maybe it's yeah it's yeah dude i agree i agree and then all of a sudden you have a, a school a poetry school you know what i'm saying and I guess, like, any wisecracking dipshit can go, well, isn't that what you're trying to do? Um, if that happens, that happens. What I'm trying to do is show that you're full of shit. And everything you know is a fucking, <laughs> a fucking game of Mad Libs, yo. Okay, so here's how the literati and academia and all this other shit come into this. When... A college professor says, this is what poetry is. This is poetry. This is good poetry. What happens here is that the room full of students listen to this, and since they're paying for this fucking education, they believe it. Then what happens is the poet or the failed poet slash college professor starts saying things like you know this is good poetry this isn't turn your work in and I'll tell you what's what you turn your work in and then he's like oh yeah this isn't good this isn't good you know you have to revise you guys have to revise 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 so he tells this room full of students this he's the professor He's telling them to revise. What they end up doing is writing poetry in the voice that they assume the professor has. Then the professor will read one of these poems and go, my God, this is amazing. Okay? So I am not a fan of revision in the sense that when you revise the reason why you're revising is because a you felt like your initial thoughts your gut reactions weren't right and b you're thinking about what other people are going to think when they read it if you didn't give a shit about what other people thought when they read it you wouldn't fucking care because you just wrote something you just created something you just breathed the breath of life into something but because you're second guessing it the only reason why you would be second guessing it is because you are worried about what someone else is going to think about it or else you would have wrote those words first the first time do you see what i'm saying so what happens is all of these professors having all of these students every semester year after year after year makes these it's like a funnel Okay, it's it's like a backwards pyramid scheme. 
you are making, you are indoctrinating people to have a shared belief as you, and you are selling that belief as fact, and it's not. So, because of all of this, and because of T.S. Eliot and the Wasteland, and all this other shit, um, poetry is probably, with, with the exception of Insta poetry, and we can have a talk about Insta, po Insta poetry another day. But the the academics do not like Insta poetry. The academics do not think Insta poetry is poetry. Okay, they they just don't. Um, so that's fine. But with the exception of that, poetry in general is less popular now than it probably ever has been because the insta poetry thing let's be honest it's going to probably be a fad um nothing can get that big that quick and last that that's not how um things solidify um and you could just check history on that um if it wasn't true we would all still be listening to crunk am i right give me a hell yeah out there okay so um with all of that said um i probably went down like seven different rabbit trails there um so let's see yeah we're, we're already halfway through this bitch let's um start talking about something else but so just so you know if, if you have any debate or any question or you want to call me a motherfucker, or anything like that, um, go ahead and send me an email at IHateMattWall at gmail.com. And if you could be so kind to put in the subject heading um, podcast response or something along those lines, um, I have a lot of things going into that email. And um, if things aren't subject lined correctly they end up lost so um i would love to hear from you because i do really enjoy um having these conversations now what we are going to do um i think i will read to you um a short piece out of my chapter book los angeles i think i'll read this one just because it's short this is called bad routine I saw the bum. He didn't seem like a real bum, but he seemed to be bumming. He was waiting off by the side, behind the bus stop, against the wall, looking normal. When I got close, he took a step out and started the crazy routine. Garlic can heal you, but it can't save you. The Lord Jesus Christ is stronger than garlic. Then I passed, and he hunkered back down by the bus stop, a phony, not a real crazy. It's a routine for him, an act. He may very well be an inspiring actor, preparing for a role, which he should be, because these fuckers out here can smell a phony a mile away, and will roll his ass tonight and I never saw him again so that just goes to show you um, whoa oh that's just that um, yeah the um, unhoused in the neighborhood there are lots of them but um, you see the same ones every time you go out um, they're a part of the community they're a part of the neighborhood you, you see them all the time and when you don't see them one day you, you worry about them a little bit. Like, you wonder where the fuck they are. Um, but that dude, fucking fake as a fucking $3 bill. Yeah, I haven't seen him since. But anyway, yeah, so Los Angeles, it's out now on my Etsy shop. Um, let's see. Was there anything else I wanted to hit? Normally, I would end the podcast with a song. 
Um, but because of that insane fucking heat wave, um, it fucked the intonation up on my guitar, like the neck bowed. And um, I don't know if I should try to fix it or if I should actually take it in. Because the last time I tried to fix it, I thought I was about to snap the neck. So, um, I don't know. I might just wait for it to cool down a little bit and maybe it'll go back to where it was and that'll be fine. So we'll find out soon, I guess. When that happens, guys, make sure you loosen your strings. Tune them down um, a few steps so it's not as much uh, torque on the neck, especially if it's like in a case and you're not playing it. You gotta fucking do that shit. Um, oh, and I did want to say this. Um, some of the things that we talked about this is one of the things I'm going to be sharing on the podcast is what the Poetic Anarchy course went over this week to give you an idea of what to expect. So right now, there's over 40 um, lessons or videos um, in the course. And it's everything from like philosophy to um, practicality to self-publishing, um, formatting, all sorts of stuff like that. And this week we went over how to continue the conversation from things that you read, um, and how to give credit to other poets and authors when you are, um, taking their work to make something of your own to where it's um, artistic and not plagiaristic. Uh, We also talked about uh, punctuation in poetry this week. We are also going to be going over, not really writing prompts, because there there are daily writing prompts, but um, a way to get you writing whenever you don't want to write or whenever, like you're like not sure what to write about. And then we also, um, towards the end of the last week, we went over age and how age plays a part in your writing and um, how age should not play a part in planning your career and stuff like that. So it's it's been a good week. And um, we have our weekly Poetic Anarchy members only live stream. So that's pretty cool. So that's coming up. I'm excited. So... Again, let me know if you have any questions or comments or hate, and um, we will do this again next week. So um, I want to thank all the good people at um, Matt Wall's Chapbooks for um, sponsoring this episode. And for those of you also who don't know, Bunny Wild's The Potato Manifesto. I only got a few copies of this left, so if you want to pick it up, pick it up. Um, With that said, I will talk to you guys next time. Take care. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.